Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Stephen Somers, who is a co-founder of Marketplace Superheroes, an education platform that teaches members how to create five or seven figure income streams selling products on Amazon. He and his business partner, Robert Ricky, are both seven figure Amazon sellers and serial entrepreneurs who build Marketplace Superheroes, as well as a full freight company and accounting service for Amazon sellers. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you very much, Rohit. I am delighted to be here. Really looking forward to diving in and giving as much value as humanly possible. Awesome. So, you know, let, let's start with the journey and, you know, what caught your start? Uh, how did you get your start in Amazon uh, FBA business? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose it's best to go back to, I'm 32 years old now, as it stands. And it, go, it, it makes sense to go back to when I was in my, my kind of late teens. I was in school, like a lot of people, thinking about what the hell am I going to do? for the rest of my career, rest of my life. And I got into the music industry, funnily enough, and I thought, I'm going to be a, a musician, a rock star, whatever, right? And of course, that didn't work out, <laughs> as I'm sitting here, <laughs> which is fine. But yeah, I was playing music for a number of years while I was basically studying business in college for two years and playing music and trying to figure out what was I going to do with, my, with myself. And so while I was in college studying business, I really got a big love for reading about business, reading business autobiographies, reading business systems, uh, business models, et cetera, et cetera. And this was all while playing music. Used a lot of that to get the music career uh, really rocking to the point where our, our band we had at the time, they, we almost got signed and you know, took off and everything. And then out of nowhere, it, it just fell apart, really, due to people moving countries and people going different directions and all of that. So I invested a number of years at this point. You know, learning about business in college, but never having a business before. I actually only I did three years of college at the time. While at now moving on, I basically started working in a in a government job where I was a data processor, which was incredibly boring. I just yeah. used to type information into a computer all day long, and I was sitting there and I thought, you know, I was supposed to do the music thing. That didn't work out. I studied a bit of business in college and thought. I don't want to finish this, this degree thing because I'm really just learning how to become an employee, which is not what I wanted at all. So I said to myself, like, what can I do now? How can I get into business for myself? And so in my early 20s, just started doing what a lot of people do. It was a Googling, you know, how to make money online, how to build a business online. And of course, getting scammed <laughs> with all the different uh, scams of the day, trying to find the fast way to do things, trying to find the quick book, all of that. And really, this, this was a number of years working in this job, which I really, really didn't like. It was just so boring. Uh, I had no prospects to, to grow in that job. I was trying to figure out how to do a business. And I got really quite frustrated, depressed, etc. cetera, uh, right up until the time I was nearly 23. And just when I was coming up to my 23rd birthday, I luckily had got to the point in time where I realized, you know, the only thing I can get involved in online that doesn't involve being an online expert, doesn't involve, you know, having to sell some weird thing to people is selling physical products on the internet. And so I decided that that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to learn how to do this. And so luckily for me, my aunt actually had a good friend who's still my business partner, as you mentioned earlier, Robert. Uh, he actually was selling products on Amazon and on eBay in the UK at the time. And basically, he just offered me the chance to come and learn with him, work for no money, but basically learn how everything worked. And I took that opportunity with two hands and basically went to work in the warehouse every single day, lifting boxes, lifting boxes out of containers, you know, freezing cold winters, digging out entire industrial estates with a shovel, just learning how to do this, this online business and learning how to sell products on Amazon and eBay. And just to cut a long story short, I worked at Robert for nearly a year, learned so much, was able to apply a lot of what I'd learned in college around business models to his business. And together, we basically started a new company 
selling globally on Amazon. And over the, about the next you know, year or so of working together, we got that to the seven-figure level. And then we operated that company at the, the seven-figure level for, for years uh, until we started Marketplace Superheroes, which we can chat about. So that's kind of how I got my start. A lot of frustration, a lot of depression at the time too, a lot of like learning along the way, but ultimately got into physical products, uh, built a really successful business on Amazon, selling all over the world. And here I am. Awesome, you know that that sounds like a great story uh, because you know you did a smart thing. You became an you became an apprentice to uh, to Robert, and you you yeah. learned uh, you know how to how to how to build a business, and then you you know took it off from there. Uh, you know, a lot of people get stuck onto jobs and they don't know what to do. But uh, but that was that was a great uh, great move. Yeah, and I think as well that's something I tell people all the time, bro. And even to this day, you know, like you're the best thing you can do is one of two things: one, go and work with somebody who is way ahead of you, has specific business knowledge around a specific business model, and learn everything you can from them. If you can go and be mentored, great. And if you can't do that, you buy your way in through education and things like that. Because the thing I learned as I started working with Robert was that he was doing well in his business. Now, there were certain things we had to change, like we had to start selling a lot of different types of products and stop selling unprofitable items and things like that. But ultimately, you know, by combining our knowledge, we were able to build a really cool, successful business. But I guess the point I'm making is he was far ahead of me in many areas, but yet I still was able to add massive value to the things he was teaching me because I knew stuff he didn't know. And so for for people listening, you know, if you can't get a direct mentor, people out there want to teach these things because Rob, he wanted to give me my chance originally because at the end of the day, he could see that down the line, I was going to be an asset to him. And equally with ourselves, when we teach our customers, you know, at Marketplace Superheroes, we know that they're going to utilize our different services, like our, our freight services and stuff like that. So ultimately, we're creating future business partners. And that's kind of like, what our goal is, because that's how I got my start. Interesting. So, uh, so you know, I, you, you build market, marketplace superheroes. Uh, you know, I want to talk about you know how how do you find products to sell on Amazon? A lot of people have different theories. Like uh, you, you, you know, uh, an international seller like me could could look at products made in India, but but uh, but a lot of uh, times, you know, people. Uh, buy products from China and then sell it to the US. So, so what is what is your strategy? What do you think is the right way to find products? Yeah. So when we like, I mean, uh, it, you know, broad brush speaking, because obviously it, it would be difficult to get into the specifics when we're just on an audio podcast. But I mean, yeah. at, at a broad level, what we look at on Amazon is we we treat it like a stock market, and we call it the marketplace model. So we're looking at a marketplace and we're saying to ourselves, what products are are selling right now of proven demand. Uh, but have lower competition and can sell at least, you know, five to 10 units a day. That's kind of what we're, we're looking for. Uh, and so we're looking for very boring, non-trendy, non-sexy, very boring, non-competitive products. And the reason that we look for those types of products is because everybody else out there is obsessed with finding a home run, a product that sells 50, 100 units a day. And sure, we, we've got plenty of those have sold plenty of those, but ultimately we, we focus on selling more products, smaller quantities every single day. And we get into these lesser competitive markets because that, that's where nobody's really looking. And not only that, there are, there are millions of these products to sell because Amazon literally sell hundreds of millions of products now at this point. So getting into these non-competitive and uh, more niched products that really only sell a small number a day, but then we sell them globally, we're able to build up a pretty significant business. But to answer your question, we look at Amazon, we initially go to the best sellers in categories. We do all of this by literally going to Amazon, going to all departments and going to say home improvement and looking through that, the different subcategories. And we started looking at, well, what's selling in these markets? Uh, and we build a list basically of products that we can sell. In other words, they're, they're doing well, they're selling well, uh, and they're not, you know, they're not prohibited. They don't have breakable parts. They're not electric, electronic. We don't sell electronic products for fault reasons, etc. So we have all this, this criteria we first look at, uh, these top 100 products. Typically, we never find stuff in there that we, we can sell. But what we do see is what types of items in this 
category are performing at the top level. Then what we do is then we click through to a product and we say, yeah, we, we could sell that. We start to look at, well, what related products are selling that relate to this item? And essentially, we start seeing more and more products that relate. And we go down the rabbit hole to a point where we're finding an item that's selling you know, a small number of units a day. It's not competitive. The listing is poor. The competition is low. And we're able to easily go in there, improve a, a new offer, brand new offer for that market, and really get it scaled out globally. Now, I know that that's kind of a very quick express version. But ultimately, we fulfill existing demand for low competition products with new uh, with a new offer that's simply better than everybody else's. And then the real key is we get that simple product and we sell it in as many Amazon markets as we possibly can. Got it. And, and do you also focus on, on price points? Because, you know, uh, we, we got a product which is as low as $10, uh, then, you know, becomes a little difficult to, 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 to scale it up to be a, you know, six or seven figure business. Yeah, like we typically look at products that are, you know, at least twenty dollars, if not more than that, in, in the U.S. In Europe, fifteen pounds, you know, euro and beyond. Because if you're getting into, like, you can sell something for ten dollars, no doubt, ten euro, uh, whatever the case may be. But typically, uh, once you go under, if you go to like seven dollars or less, it's very difficult to compete because of Amazon's fee structure and stuff like that. So we we typically look at you know twenty twenty five dollars and beyond. Uh, but really more than that, we're looking at the size of the product, the weight of the product. And we have a whole software we give our members where they're basically calculating early on, how much am I buying this for? How big is the thing? How bulky is the thing? And then they're able to calculate to the penny what their profit is going to be at a, at a specific price point. The, the problem out there right now in this Amazon world is a lot of courses are taught by just, they're just marketers. Like they don't actually understand the economics behind an Amazon product. And they just throw out things like, oh, well, it's got to be $20 and it's got to be small and light. And essentially like that stuff used to work a number of years ago, but the market has moved on now and you've got to be a lot more knowledgeable before you start selling a product. You've got to understand your numbers to the penny. And we make it very easy for our members, but essentially we're looking at all the costs associated with that product we're breaking it down and we're saying how much profit can we make if we can double our investment so if we can take five dollars and turn it into ten dollars then that's something that's interesting to us because we're doubling the value of our original investment if on the other hand we're not able to double our money you know we typically stop looking at the product or we maybe put it on the shelf for later on because if you're bringing something in from say say china for example you got to be doubling your money uh, because it takes time to ship it in and, and things like that. So essentially, we do a lot of checks. We have a lot of software that makes it really easy. Uh, but we want to be confident that our product is, is going to come in, it's going to do well, and more importantly, it's going to make us money. Because the one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to be getting into selling a product uh, that doesn't make, us, <laughs> doesn't make us money. And unfortunately, because there's so many courses out there that don't teach this stuff, uh, we see people all the time getting involved in these small, light, cheap products and wondering why they're not making money, you know? Yeah, so makes sense. And, uh, you know, you, you rightly mentioned, you know, from 2014 or 15, things have, things have really changed. Uh, you know, the lot of influx of even Chinese sellers who are selling on, on Amazon. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I want to know, how do, you, how do you set your brand apart uh, from, from other brands? And, you know, how, how do you really... Uh, to make sure that you you're creating a legacy and not a not a cash flow which which might die out die down uh, one day down the line. Yeah, I think again it comes down to understanding the business model that you're in. So if you're in the marketplace model, there's two models we talk about. You have the marketplace model and you got the brand model. So the marketplace model is what we've been talking about: utilizing Amazon for product research, utilizing Amazon to launch your business, sell products on there, make money. And then when you validated your products on Amazon, i.e., you see you're making sales, you're making money. That's the point. Then we tell people you may want to start building assets off of Amazon at that point, not because you're afraid or you're trying to run away from Amazon. Amazon is the best place you can possibly be selling your products. But when you start building a brand eventually off of Amazon, 
The reason that's important is because in a few years, that's going to become even more critical in that these other brands that you're talking about, they're not putting in the effort there to create a, something that is, you know, that, that's professional, that, that looks great, that people can actually trust. They're just building something that's there for today and it's gone, it's gone tomorrow kind of thing. They don't really care. Uh, it's very much a, a business opportunity to them. So the key really is to begin selling your products on Amazon, create a brand, uh, get your packaging right, uh, register your brand, brand registry with Amazon so that you control things. And then whenever you feel like, yep, it's validated, it's working, I now want to start building a brand around these items, that's something that you can do. The problem with most Amazon courses is they confuse this completely and they kind of one minute you're building an Amazon business, then you're kind of building a, a business off of Amazon and it's very confusing. So we take it in two unique stages and some people never move off of the, the, the marketplace model. They just sell products for as long as they can. And then if the products start to decline, you know, they've already moved on to different products in their portfolio. So they're not too worried, but ultimately as well, like the, these Chinese sellers, etc. They're only in certain uh, categories. They're typically in the very competitive items because they're getting in and they're trying to, to ultimately sell these competitive items. A lot of times they're not in these less competitive niches because the sales volume to them is, isn't interesting enough. They, they're only looking to get into these hyper uh, competitive areas. But ultimately, the key thing to look at is building a brand uh, you know, over time, and then as the, the the market continues to evolve, well, you've built something, you've built a real asset that whenever Amazon come along in the future and they only want validated brand selling, well, you've got that in place now because you've actually put the time and investment in to, to do that. Okay, and so, um, so would you recommend WooCommerce, Shopify, or, you know, other retail outlets, uh, you know, once, once, uh, once a seller has validated uh, uh, the, the brand, right? should, they, should, should they move on to such sort of marketplaces? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, like that's like everything, you know, it's like, well, what tool is best? And ultimately, like all those tools are, are really good, but they're just tools like they, they just help you build a, 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 you know, a shopping cart style website. For me, honestly, I, I actually look at more of a, a sales funnel oriented approach. I think that's the better way because, you know, you validated a specific product is popular on Amazon. Therefore, you know that you can lead uh, with that specific product. You can run traffic to that product and ultimately you can create upsells, downsells, cross sells within that single sales funnel. The problem with going to, you know, specifically to Shopify or our site or a WooCommerce site without any funnel is you're really just sending people scatter gun to a, a, a website and asking them to go figure it out. Whereas when you know, hey, I sell this specific item, I, I know that people buy it all the time from me. Well, then you know that you're able to run some advertising put them in through that specific funnel, upsell, downsell, cross sell, and make that work. So I, I prefer the funnel approach, but honestly, most of our uh, people in our community, they're focused on the marketplace model right now, maximizing that to the highest of their ability before moving on. Because here's the thing, moving on to uh, your own website, your own sales funnels, all of that, it's not easy. It's very, very tricky because you've got to start learning how to do paid advertising. You've got to learn email marketing. You got to learn how to organize your payments. You got to learn SEO. You got to learn so many things that Amazon take care of for you because you're leveraging a marketplace with traffic with customers, and that's something that you've got to be very aware of when you go in. You got to learn entire new skill sets in order to make an off Amazon business work. You know. Okay, makes sense. Uh, you know, but your course is uh, is unique because you you also talk about uh, uh, you know. Getting uh, selling a products in in Europe, um, so uh, you know s selling in Europe and other countries can can also be tricky. But uh, but but what do you suggest in two thousand nineteen? Should should people focus on on less saturated markets like uh, Japan and Asia or in Europe, or they should first focus on US and then look at other markets? Yeah, it's funny. We don't actually sell in Japan or any of those markets. And actually, Amazon okay. just closed down their Chinese operation just recently. And yes. so we don't sell there because, and I know you're in India as well. And for, yeah. for, a, non, for a non Indian, uh, India can be difficult to set up in as well uh, for, for a number of 
of, of areas. Maybe it's possible, but it's diff- it can be tricky. Japan's very tricky uh, right now. That will change with time as these you know different countries. Uh, they'll make it easier for for people to come in and get set up. Obviously, you'd have a much better knowledge than I of the terrain in in India. But we've done a lot of research, and it. it's it's a great market. It just could be tricky for outsiders to set up in. But anyway. The point entirely is we focus on U.S. and Europe. We try to get people to do both because if you're doing one or the other, it's kind of like, well, well, well why is that? Is, does that mean that if your U.S. sales don't perform at the level you want them to perform at, then you'll never launch Europe and vice versa? It sort of doesn't really make sense. Whereas what we say to people is, look, start in whichever country you feel more comfortable in. But ultimately, when you work with us, when you get our help and our coaching uh, to guide you through this, you know, we're in your corner. We've done this tons of times. We've seen hundreds and hundreds of people do it before. So we understand the, the way to do it. And ultimately, with Europe, it's actually a really simple place to sell in. Uh, now, okay, some people will talk about Brexit and all of that, which honestly is just one of those things. It's, it's, probably, <laughs> it's probably not even going to happen at this point. And really, it's not the end of the world. Uh, at all. But the point entirely is that when you sell in Europe, you can send all your products uh, into one centralized location in Europe. And you can just translate your listings. You can get your products selling into all the different European marketplaces uh, very, very simply. So my advice to everybody is launch in Europe and, excuse me, launch in the US as well at the same time. Uh, because here's the thing. If it, it costs so little to do it. And if you start a traditional business like a coffee shop or something like that in your local town, that's going to yeah. cost you anywhere from 50 to 100 grand to get involved in. If you get involved in a franchise or something like that, it's going to cost you potentially multiples of that again. So when we start an Amazon global business selling products on a marketplace, we we're able to start our, our, a global company for way less than any of that. And so to, to not leverage that in this day and age is just, it doesn't make sense, you know, whenever it's, uh, when all the possibilities that are, are present to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, so Stephen, how much, uh, you know, capital do you think, you know, somebody just starting out should, should keep it with themselves to start a Amazon business? Yeah, so my typical advice is, look, it depends what, what you want to do. If you want to start a company that is into the, the multi-million dollar level, you know, you, you, have to, you got to be realistic. You, you cannot start and will not start a multi-million dollar company in anything uh, with $500. You know, it'll take a long, long, long time. So yeah. my typical advice is to get in and get confidence and learn how this process works. We always recommend starting with at least one to $3,000 in capital to get your first products off the ground. That said, though, you know, uh, that's just to get started. Really and truly, to, t- to take this on to a level where you can really accelerate, more capital is always better. But certainly, one to three grand would get you started. The thing is, though, I always tell people, like, it's down to that coffee shop again. If you wanted to start a coffee shop, you'd be making very little money, but you've got so many expenses from buildings to insurance to staff to everything in between, inventory, the lot. And for some reason, people are happy to go to a bank and ask for capital to start that. Whereas no one, well, not no one, but a lot of people, they try to avoid capital to start an online business. And I always tell people, if you do that, you got to understand you're, you're basically saying an online business is not really a business. And the truth is, it is 100% a business. And, and in fact, in the next few years, it's going to be the way people start businesses. So you've got to go at this more from a place of, I'm going to learn how things work. I'm going to understand the process. I'm going to invest a small amount just to, just to get started. And then once I understand the model, I'm going to start investing good amounts of money, you know, $5,000, $10,000 over time, because I know when I do that, I'm able to get myself to a six, seven figure, uh, you know, level of revenue a whole lot faster than just basically asking how little can I start with? I always tell people, reframe that to how can I find more capital to get more products selling? Because more products simply equals more sales and more sales equals more profit and more profit equals you getting what you want a lot faster. 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. If you, if you think about it as a, as a real business and you, you work towards it uh, so that you know, it can give you freedom, money, whatever, uh, then, you know, once you change the mindset, I think, I think that, that's, the, that's the right way to go about it. And, uh, yeah, uh, and it's the key. It is the key to everything, to any business, by the way, online. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You've yeah. got to go in with a, a victory-oriented mindset and you've got to go in uh, excited about investing money because every, if, if someone told you, and this is the thing, like every time you put down a dollar, that's going to turn into two or maybe $2.50 or $3 every time you make a sale. Like you'd be excited about doing that and multiplying that money. But the problem is that we've been taught by society to play in defense all our lives. And, and that's just crazy, you know? So you gotta, you gotta change your brain for sure. And so, you know, you know we, we have a lot of listeners who, uh, who have a, a nine to five job or they're, they're looking to build something. You know, what, what is the mental shift required to go from an employee to an entrepreneur and, and scale your, your, your businesses? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first, the first thing everybody has got to do straight away is you've got to switch your, your playbook from team consumer to team producer. And I learned this from a great book called The Millionaire Fast Lane. And, and he talks about it in the book. You know, the truth is most of the world are consumers. And they're, we're taught from a young age, buy things and get loans to buy things and all of that. And we're never taught to invest or make money or anything like that. So it's no wonder that, you know, a lot of people don't understand these principles. It's no one's fault. It's just the way we've all been taught. But if, if people could begin to think about, how can I stop buying things all the time? And how can I begin to sell things a lot more? That one simple shift is the first thing to do because you'll start to look at the world in a completely different, uh, with a completely different frame of mind now. You're looking at the world from the eyes of somebody who's looking for opportunities, who's looking for ways to connect buyers and sellers to, to make money. So that's the first thing I would say. The next thing is you got to have a long-term outlook. Like the problem right now in this world is we're all trying to, you know, start a million dollar business overnight. And, we're, and then there's people out there who will tell you, you can do that, which is equally, you know, complete BS. And so you got to understand that anything worth doing, it takes time. You got to have a long term outlook. Like if you've been living 35 years and you've been working in a job, you've never had a business, like you can't expect in three months to be financially free. Like that's just not how cause and effect works. So you've got to understand you number one, got to switch from team consumer to producer. Number two, you've got to learn very specific new skills that are going to completely change your life. And then number three, you got to have that long-term outlook, understanding that with this new business now, I, I'm going to, I am going to get freedom, but it's not going to happen in a, in a day or a week, but it can happen in 12 months. So that's number two. And I think the third one I would share really is that you, you got to be understanding that you got to become an investor. You, you really must. And it doesn't matter what business you get into, you must become an investor. And an investor is really defined as somebody who takes resources and multiplies them. That's, that's how I look at it. So you take money, capital, and you find ways to multiply money or capital. The, one of the ways, there's many ways to do that. We're talking about buying products and selling them on Amazon. That's one way to do it. There are many more, but that's what we typically start out teaching our clients. It's the simplest uh, way to do it right now that I believe for, for most people out there. So that would be the three. I think you, you got to get and understand like I heard this story one time. He was talk, uh, a guy was talking about a bird that was learning to fly. Well, if you're a bird learning to fly, the one thing you've got to understand is you're going to go down first before you rise up again. In other words, you get out of the nest and you're going to try flying for the first time. No doubt about it. You're going to go down first because that's expected. So when you take your money and you put it into a business, like expect that, that you're going to use money to do that. Expect your resource of money is going to dip a little bit. But then understand, because you've put money into an investment, that is going to rebound with time and it's going to rise with time. It's going to multiply a lot bigger than, it, than, than it you started with. So they'd be my three main ones I think people have really got to start to understand. 
Correct. Yeah, you know, that, that was that was really helpful. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of listeners would uh, would understand that. You know, it it takes a lot of time to build a business, and you have the right sort of mental shift uh, to go from an employee to an entrepreneur. Thing, you know, what was the limit? Uh, I, you know, at, at the start of uh, our, our discussion, you talked about uh, how you you got into a lot of uh, you know, scammy online programs and all that. So, you know, I want to know how, how to get started with any business and and, and do it the right way, uh, be, be it Amazon or you know, you know any other any other business. Uh, because you you know you you're looking at uh, at scaling a business, but you also want to do it the right way because you know making money. Uh, how you make money it also does matter. So, so what is your take on that? So your question really is how to start a, a, any business the right way. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, like, honestly, like I learned, so I heard something recently actually, and I, I thought it was so interesting. A guy was saying, you want to be shopping for business models as much as you possibly can. And I actually think that's a really great way to begin to look at things. If you've no experience in business whatsoever, the worst thing you can possibly do is go out and try and figure out like a new way of doing something. And this is why like people think entrepreneurship is inventing something new or building a new Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And that's just complete nonsense. The best and simplest thing you can do to start a business the right way is to find a business model that's performing is getting results, find somebody who is doing it successfully and then simply model what they're doing. Now, some people might, might take a kind of a cynical look at that and say, Oh, well, you're clearly just telling me, you know, buy your course or whatever. And I'm really not saying that. Like if you don't, it doesn't matter if if people listening today, if you don't invest with me, that's totally fine. I'm that's no issue. I just want to see people succeed. And the way you succeed with your first business is you find a business model and you actually just execute on the model. Uh, that's what you do. Like that's why franchises are so popular with other people because you're given the business and you're essentially operating the business. Now the difference in what I'm saying is I'm not saying buy a franchise. I'm just saying go out and find a process that's been proven and someone that you trust is teaching that process and learn it. The reason people teach things online, like a trustworthy, honest person uh, who's got a track record, who's been in the, the market for a long time, who's got client results, who's got all these different things that are important to look at when picking a coach. The reason people do it, like even for me now, and, and people always ask me the question, like if you're so successful at selling things on Amazon, why do you teach it? And it comes down to a few things. Number one, for me, I can't sell every product that's available to sell on Amazon. It's just not possible. There are, there are millions and millions, number one. Number two, I, the only reason I'm where I am today is because I was given a chance by somebody far ahead of me. So I see it as an opportunity to give somebody else a chance to get their business up and running. And then the third thing is people say, well, why don't you just give it for free? Look, if I gave it for free, nobody would do anything with the material because when you pay, you pay attention. So when you see somebody out there who has got a track record, who's got clients, who's got a business model you can trust, and they're, they're teaching it, sure, some people are still out there and they're you know not ethical, they're not honest. But people like ourselves, I can tell you, I'd be totally transparent. The reason I teach people is for all the reasons above. And also, you might wonder, well, how, do, how does it work long term? Well, we set up a freight company to ship products from China to Europe, China to the U.S., we, own, we run warehousing, et cetera, for our clients. And the reason we do that is because we want to be there to provide services that you can only use when you're, that, to be successful. Like if, if our business doesn't work and if what we're teaching doesn't work, our freight company can't operate. So why would we invest in a long-term business like a freight company if we didn't fully believe and stand by the things that we teach? So I always just look for business models, uh, people with a proven track record, they've got case studies, they are, are out there, they're, they're contactable, they're, you know, it's not like they're hiding away. They're all the things that I would be looking for if I were people listening in today. But my biggest tip is learn, just become an executor of a business model. Don't try and figure it all out uh, yourself in your first run. When you get knowledge, when you get experience, expertise, then you can start to innovate down the line yourself. Uh, because you're because you're an actual you know an experienced business owner at that point. 
yeah, uh, that that is a lot of uh, knowledge bombs. I'm sure you know. Uh, yeah, uh, listeners will learn a lot from from uh, from our discussion here. Um, so I, I quickly want to do the top three. What's your favorite business book? Yeah, I mentioned earlier on. Uh, it's definitely still is the Millionaire Fast Millionaire Fast Lane by M J DeMarco. I really love that book. Uh, a lot of our members in our marketplace superheroes community, of which there are now over four thousand, they have pretty much all read it. They all love it. And they all say that book changed their life as well. So that would be the one I, I highly recommend. It has a lot of the stuff we've talked about today. Like a lot of that's in there. I learned a lot of it from that book as well as other places. But I would definitely start with that book. Okay. And you know, if you could go back in time when you started your Amazon business, what is the one thing you would have focused on? Yeah. Uh, for me, honestly, it would have been finding uh, a skill and I, I learned this, but for anybody listening, figure out a skill you can learn right now that's a service that you can provide other businesses and you can make money from it. You're like, well, why are you telling me to do that <laughs> to start an Amazon business? And the reason I tell people to do that even on the side, I used to do copywriting for online companies. I, I learned how to do it from some copywriting courses. Uh, the reason I tell people to do that is because that's what's going to enable you to make some money on the side that you're then able to utilize to, in, to invest in your Amazon business without any risk because, okay, you put some time into getting something going, but, but that's as much risk as you've had to put in. So for me, I highly recommend people learn a skill, raise money, and be ready to keep on raising money over and over, over, and over again to put more products into their business because the key to an Amazon-based business, honestly, is the more products you can sell, the more success you're going to get. But obviously, you got to make sure that you're, you're researching the right products and you're selling the right products. That's obviously important. But if you got no capital to begin with, that's where you got to start. Very, very important. Okay. And, and what's a favorite online tools example? Gmail, Slack. Uh, well, they're all great tools. So, you, <laughs> so there's, there's two gone. Uh, I suppose, yeah, I, I would have said Slack is a great tool for communication. Um, you know, a, to, a tool I use all the time, though, actually, for productivity is Brain FM. Brain.fm. It's a great tool for it. Has it's basically got binaural music beats that you can listen to to get you into a, a product, product productive state. I highly yeah. recommend. It. I think it's a great. It's a great product. So sure, we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, so what is the best way people can reach out to you and know more about Marketplace Superheroes? Yeah, so the best thing to do would just be to go to marketplacesuperheroes.com. Uh, easiest thing to do. Um, whenever you go there, we've got tons of free training and different resources and things like that that you can check out before you ever decide if it's something you want to do or not. And whenever you watch those trainings, then, you, you know, we do have a lot of different uh, programs and coaching that we do, which I, I'm not going to talk about now. But just to mention that, you know, when you come in, when you see what we've got, you see that this is right for you, you're excited about building it, then, you know, definitely get into our paid programs because that's where ultimately we can impact you at the highest level. Uh, we've got tons of coaches that work for us now. Our support is unparalleled. And I can guarantee you when you work with us, you'll, you'll get a great experience. All right, Stephen, thank you very much for coming onto the show. It was very inspiring speaking to you. And I'm sure, you know, uh, the lot of knowledge that people would have gained from, from this show. You're very welcome. I'm glad to be here. And thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we teach you how to start and grow your online business. For more information, visit Rohit's blog at www.lifeselfmastery.com.